an electrical dipole by Graham Brett. In this presentation we will cover what an electrical dipole is, how electrical dipoles relate to the heart, how an ECG records these dipoles and how the signals from the ECG relate to the cardiac cycle. So what is an electrical dipole? The electrical dipole can simply be described as two equal and opposite charges Q separated by a distance D. From this you can describe the electrical dipole moment P as the magnitude of the charge times the separation of the charges in the direction towards the positive charge. A dipole moment is a vector and the need for direction will become clear when we apply the idea of a dipole to the heart. So how do electrical dipoles relate to the heart? This drawing represents a resting heart cell. As you can see the inside of the cell is negatively charged. For atrial cells this is about minus 70 millivolts and for ventricle cells it is about minus 90 millivolts. This is created by the active transport mechanism of the sodium potassium pump which pumps three sodium ions out of the cell for every two potassium ions it pumps in. This leaves an excess of sodium outside of the cell as it cannot diffuse back into the cell as most of the sodium ion channels are shut. Conversely, most of the potassium channels are still open. This allows them to diffuse down their concentration gradient and leave the cell. However, as the potassium ions are positive and the inside of the cell is negative, the electromotive force tries to pull the potassium ion back into the cell. This then establishes an equilibrium and you get a resting membrane potential. As well as creating a resting membrane potential, individual dipole moments are created across the cell from the inside to out, represented by the yellow arrows. However, each of these individual dipole moments are cancelled out by the dipole moment on the other side of the cell. This means you get a total dipole moment of zero for the cell, and this explains why you get no signal recorded from a resting heart cell on an ECG despite the presence of dipoles. So if all the dipole moments cancel out, how do you get a signal? If we take this picture to represent a resting ventricle cell, we do indeed get a zero dipole moment from the cell, and we do not get a signal on an ECG. But when a signal from the sinal atrial node travels across the atrium to the atrioventricular node, down the bundle of his to the Purkinje fibers, and spreads out through the ventricles, and finally arrives at this cell, it causes the cell's active transport mechanisms to break down, and lots of sodium channels to open, allowing the sodium ions to enter the cell, depolarizing it to around 40 millivolts. Potential difference change on the left hand side of the cell causes adjacent parts of the cell membrane to depolarize and a wave of depolarization to sweep across the cell from left to right. This now means that the individual dipole moments across the cell membrane no longer cancel out and you get a net dipole moment pointing in the direction of the wave depolarization. When you consider thousands of cells are doing this at the same time, you get a detectable signal at the skin surface. So how do you measure these dipoles? The wave of depolarization and associated dipoles create mini electrical fields that can be detected at the surface of the skin by an ECG. However, since the heart is a complex 3D structure, the direction of the dipole and the electrical field change over time. Therefore, it is a complex procedure to detect and summate all the instantaneous dipoles of the heart into one signal. The ECG itself uses these signals to measure the heart rate and regularity, as well as the size and position of its chains. To perform a 12 lead ECG, 10 electrodes must be placed on the skin, one electrode on the right and left arm, and one on the right and left leg. The other six electrodes, V1 to 6, are placed along the chest in specific positions between the 4th and 5th intercostal space. The different combinations of electrodes allow the voltage between the two different points, known as a lead, to be determined. This allows the heart to be effectively viewed from different angles. So how do you take all this information related to the cardiac cycle? Here is an example of a typical 12 lead ECG. As you can see, there is a lot of information to digest. That is why it is often common that we only view a few leads. For example, during an operation, the patient only has three electrodes attached. Not only does this save space, but it also allows you to view lead 2, which uses an electrode on the right arm and left leg and can detect cardiac arrhythmias as it lies close to the cardiac axis, which resembles the overall direction of the heart of electrical movement through the heart. To understand an ECG signal, I will explain the basics using a, typ a, typical, a drawing of a typical healthy ECG from lead 2. Let's break it down into smaller sections. This first section shows the P wave, which reflects atrial depolarization and lasts about 80 milliseconds. The second part, the PR interval, is the time it takes for the electrical signal to pass from the sinus node through the atrioventricular node and then to the ventricles. The whole process takes between 120 and 200 milliseconds. The PR interval is therefore a good estimate of atrioventricular function. 
During this period, the atria can correct, although you cannot see this on an ECG. Moving on to the second section, the QRS complex. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization and takes 80 to 120 milliseconds. Due to the large amount of ventricle cells, the repolarization of the atriums are hidden in this complex. In this final section, we can see the ST segment that lasts between 80 to 120 milliseconds. It's the isoelectric line that responds to ventricular contraction, but as the myocardium cells are depolarized to the same potential, you get a flat line. Then we get a T wave, which represents ventricular repolarization and lasts about 160 milliseconds. A note should be made that the R wave representing depolarization of ventricles and the T wave representing repolarization of the ventricles happen in the same direction, although they are opposite processes. This is because the last ventricular cells to become depolarized, by the one on the edge of the Purkinje fibers at the furthest part of the ventricles, actually have the shortest action potential and redepolarize first. Finally, the QT interval represents the time usually between 300 and 400 milliseconds for the ventricles to depolarize and repolarize. Shorting of this interval is an indicator of ventricle tachyarrhythmias, which can lead to sudden death. Scary stuff. And on that positive note, this is the end of my presentation. This is my sources. Thank you for listening.